Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today is the first day of Cliterature Readathon. Um, it is Monday, it's currently quarter past ten in the morning and I am on sprints with my patrons. Sprints for Cliterature will be starting at half five, so very busy day. I am now completely done with filming and editing for the week, which is fantastic news. Um, I do need to take some Instagram pictures, so that is what I'm going to do in a second when I start my audiobook, which I will tell you about in a minute. I did film an intro for this yesterday, but it was a mess. So I'm just going to show you the unboxing portion of that now because they were some very exciting unboxings, especially the Fairly Adult book. So I want to include them in this because I'm not currently filming anything else. Well, I am. It's a big project, but it's not. That unboxing doesn't belong in there. <laughs> So it can go in here. So let me insert that now. Uh, this one is from Claire, as far as I know. It is gifted because the other day she gifted me another book. Um, and I think it's... Oh my god, I think it's a Winnie the Pooh mug. <gasps> Wait, Claire. Oh, wait, I'm too excited. I can't get it out. It is Winnie... <gasps> oh my god, Claire. Oh! <gasps> Oh my god, this is adorable! It's even got Winnie the Pooh on the other side. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Oh, look at him! Oh my god. I love it, Claire, thank you so much. This is adorable. Oh, I love it. Thanks, Angel. I think this is the February Fair Loot Adult box. I'm so fucking excited for this because... I've already read this book, I got an arc for it, I knew it was coming in the box and I'm so excited to see what they've done with it and to actually have a finished copy of this book as well. Oh, I've already seen the sprayed edges. Oh, I feel like this book could kill me. Okay, this is the Dear Reader letter. This is stunning. This is our main character, Freya. She is a badass and I love her. Um, and then... In here, oh my god, that is so different. Oh, I kind of love it. Holy shit. Look at those edges. If I hadn't already read this, I'd be reading this this week for Literature Book Club. Um, it is signed by Danielle L. Jensen. If you didn't know, this is a Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. And I got an arc of it and I absolutely loved it. That is Freya. And underneath... <gasps> Ooh, that is Freya and Bjorn underneath the dust jacket in foil. Oh my God, this is such a beautiful addition. Here is Bjorn. Light of my life. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, is there illustrations? I kind of want to reread it. But with the audiobook, it still doesn't come out though until the 27th. Oh no, there's not illustrations, but there is like a shadow on the chapter pages. Oh my god, that is beautiful. This book is so good, by the way. If you haven't read it yet, I would recommend doing so. And here is the full dust jacket as well nothing on the other side um i love that usually i'm always anxious about cover changes especially since um last to leave the room from ever and i i will continue to bang on about that because i hate that cover it's terrible change but this is stunning i now need a normal copy of this as well because i would like the traditional cover as well but this is beautiful fairly have knocked this out of the park oh my god i love it <gasps> I, this is the reason why I filmed early, literally this book, that's it. Well, the others as well, with the other stuff as well, but that, I needed to make sure I had it on film, my reaction. Insane. That book is very good, 10 out of 10 would recommend. So, those are some very exciting unboxings, and then this has just been posted through the door, and it is from Amy McCaw, who is the author of Mina and the Undead. I haven't read it yet, but she spotted... I can't remember where I put it now, but she spotted it. Oh, it must have been in a video. Um, it was all of my unread books and she spotted it in my video. Bless her. She messaged me to say, I would love to send you some bits um, for Mina. So I was like, 
Oh my god, of course, yeah. So, anyway, it looks like she's ended up sending me a book as well. She did ask whether or not I have the other books in the series, and I do not. Um, so, bless her. What an absolute angel. Okay, so, we have a pencil, which says, emergency, oh, it's, emer it's an emergency steak. My apologies, it's not a pencil. <laughs> Uh, emergency steak, hashtag Mina and the Slayers. This is very cute. Sorry if you can hear my washing machine. Um, and then she has sent me, oh bless her. She sent me a sticker in which she signed so I can put it in the book, like a book plate, sign book plate. Then she sent me a postcard as well and it says to Steph, thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Amy, she sent me two, ooh. These have got stickers on. One of them's red for Mina and the Undead and this one is purple for Mina and the Slayers. And she's written on the back book one and book two. So I reckon I should open these when I read the books. Um, that is exciting. Okay, and then she sent me book two, Mina and the Slayers, uh, which I'm very excited about because I haven't read these. <laughs> she signed this one as well to Steph. I hope you enjoy Mina's second adventure, Amy McCall. What a sweetheart. Bless her. Okay, listen, what is... What, so pretty so pretty um this is very exciting amy thank you so so much bless your heart thank you so much my love i'm very excited uh somebody's commented saying this book is like buffy meets scream with a touch of i know what you did last summer and i, I was here for it all that sounds like perfect to me i used to watch buffy when i was younger i don't anymore but I love the Scream movies and I'm always looking for something with the vibe of Scream. So I'm very excited about this one. It's set in New Orleans in 1995 as well. Sign me up. Why I haven't read Mina and the Undead yet, I have no idea. I apologise, Amy. I promise I will get to it soon. Especially now I'll have the second one immediately as well. Thank you so much, my love. I'm not going to open these yet. When I come round to reading the books, I will do. I don't want to spoil myself in case there's something in there that I shouldn't be opening until I read the books. But Amy, that is very, very sweet. Thank you so much, my love. I can put this um, this one in my first book as well because she signed the second one. So bless her. What a way to start the day. Anyway, thank you so much, Amy, for those. So let me give you a quick rundown of my TBR for this week. I could veer off track but we know what I'm like. So I'm just going to give you a very quick rundown and then tell you what I'm starting off with. So I did do a poll on Instagram between Always Mine by Laura Pavlov and Broken Bonds by Jay Bree. I want to read both of these anyway, but the one that did win by a landslide was Broken Bonds. Here was the poll. Uh, was Broken Bonds. So I am going to be reading this one this week, which I think is more of like a fantasy romance, which will be nice. But I would still like to get to Always Mine this week if I have the chance to do so. Then I also have Bloodlands, which is book five in the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. So I would like to finish this one. I know that these are very fast reads for me and it'll only take me a couple of hours to get through this. So that is exciting. Then I do have Lunar New Year Love Story by Jean Luin Yang and Liu Lu Yin Pham. My apologies. This is a graphic novel and I'm very excited for it. It sounds great and it says love story in the title. So I'm assuming it's going to be a love story, a romance. Um, and this one will work for POC author and also new to me author as well. I'm not sure what Bloodlands at this point will work for, but I need to read it anyway. So there is that uh broken bonds will work for new or new to me author as well um so yeah and then i've got you again by kate goldbeck i really want to read this one i'm so desperate to read this i have been since i got it late last year this has been compared to inspired by nora efron's iconic friends to lovers rom-com when harry met sally you again is a sparkling story of friendship and modern love in its many forms I'm so excited about this one. It's got bi rep, so it will count for the queer prompt. And also a new to me author. I've never read anything from Kate Goldbeck before. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then we have Faye Bound by Sarah Ella Raffi, which is my Patreon buddy read for January and February. This one is a romanticy. It is by a new to me author. I have got another book by Sarah Ella Raffi, but I haven't read it yet um and poc author as well so i'm very much so looking forward to this one i think this could be my five star prediction i do have very high hopes for this book so we'll see whether or not that works out but yeah i'm not sure if i will 
Oh, I'm also reading a Kindle. Sorry, I'm also reading An Arc of Lights Out by Kayla James. I'll show a picture of it here. This is an F1 romance. Um, she is an F1 driver and she's just gotten into a team for the first time. He is also an F1 driver and he's got like four championships under his belt. So I think it's going to be like rivals to lovers, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm like 46 pages in or something. I'm not too far in, so I'm hoping to read that this week as well. This will probably be like my nighttime read. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that one as well. So I do have quite a lot to potentially get through because uh, I've got these one, two, three, four, five. I've got these five plus lights out as an arc, which is six. Whether or not I manage it all, we'll see, but um, I am going to start off with Broken Bond. So very quickly, I'm going to tell you about this. After the death of my mother and her bonded, I was relieved to find my own bonds. I was sure everything would be okay if I had them. It wasn't. The fate of our people is in my hands and I know we're better off if I'm alone. After five years on the run, I'm caught and dragged back to face the men I ran away from. I thought I was doing the right thing. Now I'm not sure. North, Knox, Gri Griffin, Atlas and Gabe may never forgive me, but one thing's for sure, I won't ever forgive myself. Um, sounds interesting. I'm also obsessed with these chapter break page things so cute so yeah very excited about this one and this is what i'm going to start off with while i take some instagram pictures now so i will check back in with you when i've made a start on that and i've got something else to tell you about it but that is my plan for the week so i'm really excited i'm looking forward to it it's going to be a busy week i'm getting my nails done tomorrow at 11 o'clock normally i wouldn't get my nails done on tuesday it would usually be a wednesday or thursday because it's a working working day uh, but I'm going to do sprints from Andy's after getting my nails done tomorrow because he'll be at work till 7. And then I'll be working Wednesday, Thursday. I'll spend a few hours with Andy on Friday, then come home. And then I'll, it will be sprints right through the weekend then. So I'm looking forward to it. Lots of time for reading. Hopefully I'll get plenty done. And yeah, I will chat back in with you and I've got something to update you on. I have done two lots of sprints today. I have no idea where the day's gone today. This evening's gone a little bit slower, but the daytime went by so fast, especially sprints with patrons. But I have quite a lot to update you on because I have done a significant amount of reading today. And either I'm gonna slow right down and just about get through my TBR or I'm gonna have to add more books to my TBR, which is fine. Uh, so, starting off with Broken Bonds by Jay Bree, I finished this one. I finished it, was it right before my sprint start ended? My patron sprints? Yeah, in the last sprint I finished this one. Um, I liked this. I It did start off being kind of, I don't know, feeling a little bit childish. And I mean, I suppose it's a product of its time. 2021 it's not that old then i thought it was older than that but um oh no that's the savage land series 2021 so yeah i don't know it started off feeling a little bit childish it turns out our main character ollie she's 19 
in this and she i think i've always already given you a rundown of what's going on she has run away and she's been gone for five years and now she's been kind of they've caught up with her her bonds essentially have caught up with her these different guys one two three four five different guys have managed to catch up with her and dragged her back to the school that they teach at or attend whichever they're all doing different things at the school uh so she's now at the school she's made this new friend called sage and they're getting on like a house on fire she loves them but she cannot bond with her bonds for a reason now it's got something to do with her her gift i think unless she's not got a gift and it's just something to do with the bonds but there are different people going missing like her and it seems like they're getting closer and closer to finding her and taking her away and i think it's something to do with this the reason why she can't bond with the guys um I'm still not 100% certain the reason why. We haven't gone to the to the crux of the reason why, but this left itself quite on a cliffhanger. And in the second half, I did kind of warm up to the story a lot more. And I enjoyed the second half so much more than the first. I feel like the first half, we were just kind of wading through mud a little bit, trying to get the world building in and exactly what's going on and all of these different guys and her interactions with each of the five guys because she's got different interactions with each of them a lot of them blame her and are pissed off with her for running away when she did they don't understand the reason why she did that and she is opening up to one or two of them as to what the reason is behind it but they're all pissed that she won't bond with them either so it was good i gave it four stars it's interesting i'm intrigued to know what happens next though so i've added them all to my kindle unlimited wish list albeit these covers are stunning so i may try and get physical copies of them jay Bree's actually going to be a rare this year as well in september when i go to edinburgh so um yeah four stars for this one i flew through this though what i will say is that the writing style is very easy and you will fly through these books they are so easy to get through um so i finished that one i then went on to lunar new year love story which is a graphic novel this one is following val who at the very start she's had a huge heartbreak in her life um her mom has passed away and she's just not 100% certain if she believes in love at the age that she is now we do have like a flashback to when she was back in kindergarten and well of that age and she used to give out valentine's cards to everyone in her class every single year and she would receive one from this cupid essentially that her dad said was her imaginary friend now as she's gotten older she's at a point where she doesn't really believe in love she's got this best friend called beatrice who is very much a bit of a player she'll like start off having fun with a guy and then the minute that it turns into something serious that's it she's out of there she compares it to like a brownie you know when the edges always cook perfectly and then the middle sometimes might not cook quite right and it's a bit soggy in the middle she's like i just want the edges and that's all i want in a relationship before it gets too deep so anyway she ends up meeting this guy and she ends up dating him now she knows his cousin he's in her class at school and he was part of her class back when she was in kindergarten. Something happened to them back then. As far as like these Valentine's cards are concerned. And she ends up dating this guy. And it just kind of goes from there. This was really sweet. I really enjoyed the illustration style. The storytelling was done really, really well. I really liked the way that the story was going. And it weaved in um, both Korean and Chinese kind of mythology if you like um as well as like saint valentine which i think is christianity if i am correct i'm not religious in the slightest i have been christened but i'm not religious i don't go to church or anything but i just thought that this was really really interesting i thought it was done really really well 
Um, so this also got four stars, really enjoyed the writing style, thought it was beautiful, especially like they were um, lion dancers and stuff as well. And I think some of the pages were just really, really beautiful with the lion dances, especially towards the end. Oh, there was this page, which was beautiful of two of them sat looking at the moon. And then like these pages, beautiful of the lion dancing. Um, just really, really stunning. And I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. So four stars for this one, had a good time with it. And then I also, part way through reading Luna New Year Love Story, I was making my tea, washing some pots, sorting out the washing into the dryer, etc. So I was pottering about in the kitchen for a couple of sprints. And I decided that I needed an audiobook. There was no point like wasting time in silence doing all of that. I couldn't physically read Luna New Year Love Story while I was doing all of that. So I decided to start another book on audio. I gave the... Um, live show the floor to pick my next book between you again by kate goldbeck and bloodlands by stacy marie brown and bloodlands did in fact win which is book five in the savage land series and i made it to page 112 i forgot the cliffhanger that badlands ended on so uh this was in fact quite savage to go into because i forgot the plot the, the the cliffhanger uh this i'm really enjoying this story it is i thought someone walked past my window then that was really creepy i don't really like sitting in this window like this especially with the blinds open but whatever um this is like a dystopia-esque romance it's definitely fantasy romance there's fey in here there's druids there's witches there's all kinds of stuff going down we're following brexley who was born 20 years ago and the night that she was born the wall fell between the fey and the humans and there was a big war her mother died now we fast forward 20 years when we meet Brexley as a 20 year adult and she is the ward of the king and queen of the humans. Her best friend is their son and she's in love with him and to get her kicks because obviously she lives quite the royal life if you like despite the fact that she's not actually a royal she's the ward of the king and queen to get her kicks she jumps on the trains that travel to and from the human and fey lands to deliver you know medicines and things like that and she steals from the trains to make sure that these things are going to the people that actually need them now one day she ends up getting caught on one of these trains and thrown into a fey prison in which she has to physically fight for her life and she meets this guy called Warwick Farkas um, and the story kind of goes from there I've told the synopsis of this book so many times <laughs> I know it like the back of my hand um, it kind of goes from there and we're now five books in there are so many other characters the story has gone so much further than that right now and I'm really enjoying this I'm having a very good time with it I I just I just really enjoy Brexley as a character. I think she's a very fierce female main character. I love a Warwick Farkas. I love some of the other side characters as well. And I'm just having a very good time with this. It's really, really good. The writing is nothing special. I think I got halfway through saying that before I thought of seeing someone outside. The writing is nothing special by any means. It's never going to go down in history as a literary masterpiece. Do you know what I mean? But it's very addictive. It's very fast paced. It's very addictive. It's very much so like the Zodiac Academy. Becca would not agree with me. She didn't like the Zodiac Academy, but she's getting on with this one. Um, but I think it's got the same, it gives me the same feeling as the Zodiac Academy. Like I can fly through these books in a couple of hours, which is rare for me to be able to do. Um, and it's, I just, I just have a good time with them, <laughs> you know? Uh, it's like trash TV, you know, reality TV, like it's not great, <laughs> you're not learning anything from it, uh, but you're getting a dopamine kick. That's what these books give me, a bit like Zodiac Academy, <laughs> very much so like Zodiac Academy. So yeah, 112 pages in, so far having a good time with this, well, as good a time as you can at this point in this book. Um, there's been a lot of death, put it that way. Uh, and it's becoming quite entertaining to say the least. So I will be continuing on with this tomorrow. I'm hoping to finish this tomorrow. I'll be doing patron sprints, not patron sprints at all, public sprints from Andy's tomorrow. 
because I'm getting my nails done. I think I already mentioned this, but I'm getting my nails done at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so after I've had my nails done, I'm going to go to his and do sprints from his from about half one. He finishes work at seven, so I'll finish around seven o'clock and then we'll have some tea, watch some TV and go to bed. Uh, but I'm thinking that I will probably get through this and get on with something else at that point. So I'm probably going to take this with me. And then I think I'm going to take, I'll probably end up taking you again. And then also my Kindle, because I do want to get to Lights Out as well. I may go to bed right now and try and read some more of Lights Out, try and get to page 100. I thought I was on page 46 of that. I think that's what I told you this morning, but I'm actually on page 52. I double checked earlier so i might try and get to around the 100 page mark in that tonight um just to make some more progress but yeah today has been very successful and the rate i'm going i may need to add some more books onto my tbr at this point so um you know two and a bit books down i have got lights out the rest of bloodlands fey bound and you again that's left on my tbr to read for this readathon so and i will have all of Friday night, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday. <laughs> Feybound is by no means oh, Feybound is by no means small, and you again is kind of long. It looks it anyway, but the audiobook's not that long. It's only just over nine hours, I think. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. I am saving this one for the weekend, um, so I will be uh, doing that over the weekend, which is cool beans. But yeah, I think I'm going to take you again, Bloodlands, and my Kindle with me to Andy's tomorrow. So I'm going to go. I just wanted to come on and give you an update. This is a real long update. My apologies. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go and get in bed because I am pretty tired. It's been a, it's not been a long day. I don't know how I was going to say that. I've just done a lot today. So work-wise, it's felt like a long day. But as far as the day is concerned, it's not. Like today, the daytime, just flew by before i knew it it was four o'clock and i was ending patron sprints getting ready to settle down for public sprints it was wild i have no idea where the patron sprints went today it was crazy every time i looked up from whatever it was that i was doing to see how long i had left on the timer there was like 12 minutes left every single time and i was like did i set this timer for 50 minutes or have i lied to myself and just completely gatless gat gatlist gaslit myself <laughs> into thinking I did 50 minutes. I was in fact doing 50 minutes. It was just flying by. So yeah, I'm gonna go to bed and I will check back in with you tomorrow. it has been a while since i updated you with this vlog um i've had two days at work i was meant to be working wednesday and thursday and coming home today like earlier on in the day but i ended up being really unwell on wednesday i had a really bad headache so i just stayed at andy's all day and then i've worked yesterday and today for some reason my neck is absolutely killing and my shoulders they're really really achy and i don't know what i've done maybe i've just slept too hard i'm not sure um but i do have some reading updates for you so i'll tell you about those in a second but yeah i've come home and i've got a couple parcels so i thought we could open them up together this looks it's from blackwell so it looks like it could be a pre-order unless i've ordered out something recently oh i did actually maybe it's that which would be exciting yay okay so i put a notify me on blackwells where this came back in stock and i'm so excited to have this it is saving six um the third one in the boys of Tommy series by chloe walsh i do already have a copy of this i have the uk copy but this is the american special one of the special edition covers that will match oh, it's so floppy that will match my other two and i'm so excited to have it so that is very exciting see this one is like 400 odd pages and saving six my uk edition is like 800 or something or 900 pages yeah this is like 487 ish pages so i'd probably end up reading this one to be honest when i come around to actually reading it but very excited to have that um and then we do have an illumicrate box so i am assuming that this is 
February's Luma Crate book. It is. All right, so this is To Cage a God by Elizabeth May. I know nothing about this, but this is stunning. Look at the back. <gasps> It says to cage a god is divine to divine to be divine is to rule to rule is to destroy oh wow it is signed by the author these are the end papers on this side this is super freaking pretty oh my god i actually have an audio arc of this as well from netgalley these are the other end papers that looks like um you know the city of frozen <laughs> Just me? All right then. Um, and then underneath the dust jacket on the naked hardcover, it looks like this with the foil. This is so pretty. Okay, what is this about? This is a long synopsis. Using ancient secrets, Galena and Sarah's mother grafted gods into their bones. Bound to brutal deities and granted forbidden power no commoner has held in a millennia. The sisters have been raised as living weapons. Now the time has come for them to overthrow an empire, no matter the cost. With their mother gone and their country on the brink of war, it, it falls to the sisters to take the helm of the rebellion and end the cruel reign of a royal family possessed by destructive gods. Because when the ruling Alluria invaded, they conquer with fire and blood, and when they clash, common folk burn. While Sarah reunites with her estranged lover, who now leads the rebellion, Galena infiltrates the palace in this world of deception and danger her only refuge is an isolated princess whose whip smart tongue and sharp gaze threaten to uncover galena's secret torn between desire and duty galena must make a choice work together to expo expose the lives of the empire or bring it all down <gasps> fascinating it sounds like this could be um queer which is great news also it's got that it's not quite flat but it opens really nicely um beautiful this is absolutely stunning so glad i didn't skip on that one because i skipped on a few of the crates coming up so very excited about that one and then this one is from i think it's a cipher parcel because i did put in a cipher order how do i get into this Okay, so as I did with my last cipher package, I got a whole bunch of bookmarks, um, which is cool. Some of these I recognise from my last package from them. Uh, so I did get a couple of manga and then I got a couple of books as well. So the manga that I got is Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, Volume 1. Gav has recommended this one to me and put it in my patreon part sorry just making sure it's english gab has recommended this one to me and put it in my patreon part so i wanted to make sure i had it on hand then i also have the haunted bookstore gateway to a parallel universe volume one i have the light novel of this but i also wanted the manga as well so i have that and i also got your name volume one as well i've been wanting to read this one for a while so i did pick this one up as well there is a reason for me having all of this manga at the moment and you'll find out in a couple of months um then the books that i got i did get system collapse by martha wells which is the next one in the murderbot diaries um i enjoy this series this is book one two three four five six in the series this is chunkier than the other novellas it's over 230 pages so i do have this one now which is exciting and then i also got because i have seen these about for a while now and i really wanted to get them um because they sound like they would be up my street quite frankly so i did get light lark and also nightbane by alex astor they sound good and they hardbacks for these are really pretty and i could get the this one reasonably cheap it's been out for a while now it's in paperback now but i could get this one reasonably cheap from cypher so i i got it um welcome to the sentinel every hundred years the island of light lark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where the rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide, each curse is uniquely wicked. To break them and save themselves and the realms, one ruler will die. To survive Isla Crown To survive, Isla Crown must lie, cheat, betray, even as love complicates everything. It sounds really good, so I want it oh pretty. I wanted to get it in hardback as well, because 
<sighs> Apparently I'm bougie like that. And then obviously Nightbane, which is the next one in this series. Pretty, the end papers are a map as well in this one. Which is nice. I don't know if this is a duology or a, a bigger one. I'm not sure. Or bigger than a duology, I'm not sure. But now I have at least the first two. So that's exciting. These covers are really pretty as well. Um, so yeah, that's just my um, little book haul that I've come home to. Not so little book haul that I've come home to. Right, reading update. I did finish Bloodlands by Stacey Marie Brown. I can't remember if I updated you on this or not. Um, while I was at Andy's on Wednesday, must have been Wednesday, or was it Tuesday? Because I went to his Tuesday night. Maybe it was Tuesday. I Anyway, I finished this. Did I give you an update on this or not before I left the house? Maybe I did. I'm not sure. I'll check back through the footage and if I haven't given you an update on this, I'll tell you about it at the end of the vlog. Um, but yeah, I finished this. I'm not going to give you an update on it now because there's no point. And then I have, I haven't made a great deal of progress. I made a little bit of progress on Monday night with um, Lights Out. But I haven't made any more progress with that. So I do need to come back round to it. I'm around 73% in. So I need to come back round to it. Um, but last night I did start You Again by Kate Goldbeck. Which is for the queer prompt. Also an author new to me and illustrated cover. And I got to... I didn't have a bookmark on me. Story of my life. I got to page 79 of this. Um, so this is following Ari and Josh and basically we start off with Ari She works in the street kind of for a charity company and she approaches this man and asks him She's trying to look for like the gap last uh, Person to sign up for the day to reach her quota She asks him and he's very very rude to her and then she carries on and she's got this friend called Gabe I think he's called Gabe. Is he called Gabe? Yeah, Gabe who also does this with her, but he is also her manager because she wants to get into comedy. Uh, well, she is a comedian, but she wants to get into it more on like a epic scale. And he's her manager, but she has a very casual friends with benefits relationship with him. Um, that is absolutely not a relationship whatsoever. They just sleep together on occasion. So she ends up bringing him back home. Her flatmate is out um, and she ends up getting a knock at the door. And it turns out that it's this guy called Josh who was the rude bloke to her in the street. Turns out Josh is dating her flatmate who is called Natalie, if I remember, and correctly. And yeah, yeah, Natalie. Um, it turns out that Ari's actually sleeping with Natalie as well. <laughs> She's got a very casual relationship with Nat Natalie as well. So Josh and Ari are sleeping with the same person, but he wants to wants this relationship to be, be more serious. Anyway, they end up having this interaction. Gabe leaves. Um, they end up having this interaction at the flat, which is very, very awkward. They clearly don't get on with each other. And then we jump three years into the future in which Ari has a new flatmate now um, who works. She doesn't know this at the time, but she actually works under um, Josh in a kitchen because Josh is a chef and they end up having another run-in and then we jump two years and they have another run-in again um and this is going to continue on throughout the book I think it's supposed to be a lot like when Harry met Sally however I'm not getting the cozy vibes like I do from when Harry met Sally this is very standoffish very jumpy and I don't think I'm enjoying it I'm not having the cozy good time with it like I thought I was going to I feel like the time jumps are very jumpy I feel like we're just not getting enough time with the characters to really understand them as people Josh seems very standoffish he seems like a bit of a dick a bit of a stiff he's just not casual at all there is nothing casual about this man at all even from the first time that we meet him there is nothing casual about this man Ari is very sex focused which is fine doesn't bother me in the slightest but the minute we switched from sex focused we then went to drugs and alcohol focused and I just feel like 
I, I don't know, I'm, it's just not cosy. It's not what I was expecting. I wanted cosy when Harry met Sally vibes and that's not what I'm getting and I'm feeling really let down by it. I'm only 80-ish 80 page, 80 pages in but I don't think I want to waste any more time on this this week. I may put it back on my shelves to potentially come back round to in the future but on the basis that I'm on a little bit of a time crunch I don't want to waste any time continuing on with this if i'm not enjoying it so i'm gonna use soft dnf that for the now for the now for the now for the now that's the term now gonna soft dnf it i'm gonna soft dnf it for now strolls jeez um and the only book that was left on my tbr was then Feybound by sarah l arafi i have a meeting in 10 minutes so i gotta speed this up um by sarah l arafi so I have this that I need to get to and I would really like to not leave that as the last book of the readathon. But I'm not going to lie, I am shattered today. It has been a long few days. I think I'm still recovering from having that headache on Wednesday and trying to prevent it from becoming a migraine. And then I've already been at work today. So I've just finished work. Now I've got a meeting at five o'clock and then I've got sprint starting at quarter to six through the evening and I'm too tired for this today I'm not gonna lie I reckon I might only go for a couple of hours watch a few episodes of Drive to Survive and get in bed because I'm absolutely shattered so I don't know whether to try and pick something up that's going to be a little bit easier now you again was my for my queer pick now I've soft DNF'd it I don't know if this is queer or not I have heard that it is but I don't know if that's true so I'm tempted to pick up like a manga for queer rep potentially maybe i could do a volume of killing stalking i may do that i'm not 100 percent certain what i'm going to go into i do need to finish i need to remember to do this but i do need to finish lights out um so i could do that this evening but i just don't know if i'm in the mood for like an audiobook maybe so maybe i will start this i don't know a couple of other books that are on my radar right now are also always mine by laura pavlov which was on the poll with broken bonds and broken bonds one so i could read this it's short uh but also mile high by liz tomford i'm very intrigued by this but it is chunky so i don't know i'm gonna see how i'm feeling a little bit later but i did want to come on just give you an update and unbox those books with you um and just let you know what's going on and the fact that i've soft dnf'd potentially hard dnf'd um you again by kay goldbeck i'm gonna do a little bit more research into it see if there's anyone else that's read it and see what they think um but yeah that's where i'm up to i desperately need to wash my hair and i'm so tired so so tired which <laughs> quite frankly would like to have some tea and go to bed i'm not gonna lie do this meeting have some tea and go to bed now i made a right mess of the library and now i don't want to be in here my next door neighbors chopped down the giant monkey tree and there's so much light in this room now <laughs> which is lush but I just wasn't expecting it when I got home. I knew they were going to do it because they previously told me, but I just wasn't expecting it when I got home. So all of a sudden I was like, where the fuck is the monkey tree gone? Um, anyway, it was a really big monkey tree. It was bigger than the house. It was huge. Um, it seems like I'm being dramatic, but it was a really, really, really big tree. But I'm going to go. So I'll check back in with you when I've decided what I'm doing, when I've got an update for you, let you know how I'm getting on and I'll speak to you then. afternoon it's currently 20 to 1 on saturday i have spent the morning doing some reading and then just had a shower and i'm about to settle in to continue reading do a little bit of work before sprint start at 3 p.m um so i didn't update you yesterday on what i decided to pick up reading i did let everyone on sprints decide for me and it was between mile high and always mine and they did pick always mine uh, because it is shorter and this was originally on my poll with broken bonds and broken bonds one so yay for that and i have now finished this <laughs> um this is a best friends to lovers he is a firefighter she is a 
baker um, and she has her own shop and they've been best friends since kindergarten so basically i don't think previous to what's gone on in this book um they've had much pining for each other they've just been best friends um and we start off with vivian having we kind of go through the motions of her having found out not immediately when we get into the book but off page she's found out that her partner has been cheating on her and he's now gonna marry that woman and she ends up having a drunk chat one night with nico while they're out while she's drowning her sorrows she ends up having a drunk chat with nico one night about her sex life about the fact that it's never been very good um and all of this sort and then kind of propositions him into kind of being like well you could show me how to have a good time because you're well known for having being able to have a good time and give a girl a good time he's like dude no we're best mates we're not doing that however in the back of his mind he is like i've always thought that she's beautiful but now it seems to mean something um so this goes on for a little bit and they end up inevitably getting together great I love me a best friends to love a story that is my I say this every single time but that is my relationship essentially we were best friends we've been best friends for 12 years we've been together almost two years now and I love it when it's done well in a book for example you and me on vacation by Emily sir you and me on vacation by Emily Henry love life love light farms by BK Borison um, I love it when it's done well this i enjoyed the story i'm intrigued to read more from laura pavlov and especially in this series because i did enjoy the characters however i feel like the romance was rushed a little bit so we're told that they've been best friends from kindergarten but as far as their best friend side of things so like you and me on vacation we explore the best friend side of things for a portion of time before they become more love light farms we explore the best friend side of things before they come more i am invested in the fact that they are best friends and this could ruin their friendship which is you know mine and my partner's relationship we were so ingrained in each other's lives as best friends that it was tough for us to take that leap of faith into something more because if it doesn't go right we could lose our best friends it's that's those are how high the stakes are with something like this i didn't feel that in this this is like the second book this year that's done this to me we had um brother's best friend with done and dusted and the stakes were not high enough because we got no on page time with a brother and his best friend do you know what i mean like the stakes weren't high enough so again with this we got a couple of scenes where they're just being best mates very quickly at the beginning of the book before she's propositioning him into let's have sex no strings attached so that you can show me a good time and i know what it's supposed to feel like and i just feel like we could have done with more of them hanging out more of their their friendship so that i'm invested in their friendship and the stakes are high enough for me to be like is this a good idea do you know what i mean or for me to be like these two need to be together i wasn't at that point everyone else in the book was because they've seen their friendship from being kids so everyone else in the book was like this needs to happen or it's about time like everyone was with me and andy but me as the reader i didn't feel that i didn't feel it which is a shame overall i liked the writing style i liked the characters the small town was cute the firefighter thing very hot loved it the plot in the background as well there is a lot of stuff going on with like her ex and his dad with the plot in the background so there's like no third act breakup in, in this or anything but the drama comes in with her ex and his father but that was all very very well done but the romance side of things i just didn't feel it i wasn't feeling it i haven't run this through corp out but i reckon it's going to get about a three star this cover is stunning i love it i reckon it's going to get about a three star but i will try some more from laura pavlov she is going to be at rare so we'll see how that goes um but yeah so i have read this one another book that i finished early hours of this morning 
was Lights Out by Kayla James. My physical copy is coming today. So she's released the physical copies earlier than the Kindle Unlimited. Um, so I did buy one yesterday. So my physical copy is going to arrive today. I will unbox it with you so that you can see it in physical. Um, I need to run this through Corpile. So maybe what I'll do is save my review for you once my physical copy comes and I can talk you through the book and my review and I've run it through Corpel so I can give you my full review because I'm not 100% certain on what the review for this is going to be. Just know that I fucking love this book. It was chef's kiss. It was really, really, really good. So today's plan with sprints is going to be to focus on Feybound by Sarah L. Arafi. I'm going to try and get a couple hours in now before sprints start. Um, and see how far I can get with this. I am going to be audio booking it, but this is my Patreon buddy read for the months of January and February, and we have the live show for this on Friday next week. So I'm really looking forward to that. We haven't done live shows before for our buddy reads, so I'm looking forward to having a live show. Um, but this is an enchanting new trilogy from the author of Final Strife. I have Final Strife, but I haven't read it yet. Um, Yiren was born on the battlefield, lived on the battlefield, and one day she knew she'd die on the battlefield. As a warrior in the elven army, Yiren has known nothing but violence her whole life. Her sister, Leetal, is trying to make a living as a diviner, seeking prophecies of a better future. When a fatal mistake leads to Yiren's exile from the evil elven lands, both sisters are forced into the terrifying wilderness beyond their borders. They are... They are there they encounter the impossible, the Fey Court. The Fey haven't been seen for a millennium, but now Ye Yeeran and Leetal are thrust into their seductive world, torn between their loyalty to each other, their elven home and their hearts. I'm looking forward to this one. I do love me a, a good Fey book. This is absolutely beautiful and I believe it's queer. So this will knock off the prompts um, a queer book and also POC author, a new to me author and an illustrated cover. It knocks off a lot of prompts, this one, actually. So I'm very excited for this one, and I am going to get into this one now. So this is going to be my main focus for the day. I would love to get through this today, um, because there's another book that I would like to read tomorrow, but I'm not going to mention it unless I manage to actually do it. And then I would also like to read Killing Stalk in Volume 3. Just fancy sticking a manga on here as well. Um, so this one is a series that I've already started, obviously. It's Volume 3. So we're following Oh sang -woo and Yoon Bum. Um, basically, Yoon Bum had an obsession with this guy called Oh sang -woo and in the first book and was kind of stalking him a little bit until one day he ended up finding himself inside sang -woo's house and this guy was not who Yoon Bum thought he was and things have taken a very, very dark, disturbing, very bizarre, weird turn. I don't know how many words to use to explain this book, but it's very, very weird and it's not for everybody. <laughs> let me tell you it's really really dodgy the the whole time i was reading volume one i was like why am i reading this this is all kinds of fucked up and but i just couldn't stop it's like a car crash do you know what i mean like you shouldn't really be looking it's really really bad and you shouldn't be looking but you just can't take your eyes away that's what this series is like um so i would like to continue on with this one it's all kind of weird fuckery and i would like to continue on with this one it should be a quick read there aren't necessarily loads of, i'm trying to find a page that won't like spoil anything specific but there aren't necessarily like loads of words on the page or anything just very quickly that will be what it looks like it is in color i think it's actually a manhwa rather than a manga but yeah, so I'm going to try and read this as well today, I think. And then tomorrow, I've got another book planned, but we'll see whether or not that works out. Um, if it doesn't, I will probably try and pick something a bit shorter. So we'll see how that goes. But that's my plan for today. Feybound and Killing Stalk in Volume 3. Um, I have the rest of the day to go. Obviously, I've finished this today already, and I did finish Lights Out early hours of this morning. So I've finished two books today, but I hadn't slept when I finished Lights Out. So in theory, that was yesterday's book. So yeah, that is my plan. I'm going to go get myself set up and I will check back in with you later when Lights Out turns up and I can give you my full thoughts and review on it.
that didn't take long at all it's only 20 to 2 <laughs> and the parcel has come as well as two others so let's do these other two first and then I can come back to you and wrap up lights out because I'm fairly certain that's lights out anyway so this one is from Waterstones I'm really hoping that it'll be a fate inked in blood <laughs> yay <sighs> it's so pretty oh I love it it's got blue sprayed edges it's not signed by Danielle but that's fine because I'm going hopefully going to wear in September so I can get it signed then this is so pretty this is the main reason why I wanted to get this one <laughs> but I'm really glad I've got it because the Fairyloot edition was so different um that I really wanted a copy with the original dust jacket so I did get this one if you didn't know I absolutely love this book it was fantastic it is a Norse Viking inspired um book about shield maiden and it's absolutely outstanding and i would 10 out of 10 recommend and then we do have the afterlight box as well um so this one is who's your caddy i know what the book is in here as well um and these are our characters i assume uh with a dear reader letter on the back and the book in question is Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I really enjoy Tessa Bailey's books. This is so pretty. So pretty. I did not know this was golf, though. How did I not know this? To be fair, I didn't know the synopsis. I don't know the synopsis of this at all. Um, underneath the dust jacket, we do have this. It says Wells Bell. And then we do have the same artwork on the... M papers with some new one on the other and is it signed yes it is signed by Tessa Bailey as well so I'm very excited about getting to this one it can go on my I'm gonna have to find some room for it first my afterlight shelf um this one is a super sexy sports romance duology with a rom-com about a bad boy professional athlete who falls for his biggest fan nice i haven't read a golf romance before so that'll be new for me um but yeah that is exciting so fangirl down from afterlight and then <gasps> i'm so excited to have this book because i absolutely loved it um so we've got lights out by kayla james this is so much bigger than i anticipated that's what she said <sighs> love this book so much it's so good so in this book we're following blake and we're following Ryder. blake is a rookie to f1 Ryder is a four-time world champion who has just had eight excuse you who has just had 18 months out of racing due to an accident uh halfway through one of the seasons so he had to take the rest of the season off and then the following season to recover because it's a really bad accident now blake is the first f1 female driver to um join with f1 this is all being done underneath nightingale who is a new f1 team so they're taking a huge risk they're taking on the first female f1 driver who's a rookie she's only got eight years of racing underneath her belt and underneath her belt under her belt and Ryder, who is um recovering from an accident a very bad accident but is a four-time world champion so for any team this would be risky business but for a new team it's extra risky business the guy that owns this team is nikolai who is an ex-driver himself and knows Ryder very very well because he used to race with Ryder's dad so Ryder is quite the tortured soul. He has had a lot of loss in his life and then also to have this accident and have to come out of it and recover. He's in a very dark place and his sole purpose in life is to win another championship. That is literally all he's living for is to win another championship. Um, so when he then gets to the racetrack for the first race of the season or for testing sorry for testing not the first race of the season for testing and he goes out on the track he hasn't met blake at this point he just knows that there's another teammate and they're about to go like head to head on the track and have some testing time um it, it turns out very very interesting and then he finds out blake's a woman and also immediately is into her 
and the story kind of goes from there that this was absolutely fantastic i have run it through core pile i've just done my review it got five stars it was so good i have read a few f1 romances over the years i've read fast and hard and fast and wet from cat ransom i have read um throttled by lauren asher and i've dnf chasing daisy by page two and i did not like that one in the slightest but what i will say is that it's interesting the lack of research that some of these authors have done for these books for example the fast and hard and fast and wet series the guys in both of those books i didn't continue on with the series because i just couldn't do it anymore but the guys in both of those books were built like rugby players they were huge. They were like six foot four, 220 pound. Think Jack Reacher or a rugby player. They were way too big to fit in an F1 car. Now I'm an F1 fan. So a lot of people, quite a few people that pick up those books may not pick up on that discrepancy, but I do. Um, so you can have tall F1 drivers. You can, maybe not six foot four. I'm not sure. I know George Russell is about six one. So you can get tall F1 drivers, but they're not built like rugby players they're slim their necks are pure muscle their neck is the thickest part of them and their necks are pure muscle but they're slim fit but slim so it just didn't make sense to me and it bothered me a lot it won't bother a lot of people but i'm a big f1 fan so if you're gonna do it do it right do you know what i mean whereas kayla must have she's either a huge f1 fan herself or she's done some intense research or both because she's really gone into the research on this our main character rider is based off of Charles leclerc uh which is fantastic i do love Charles leclerc he's a very very handsome man that man should be modeling let me tell you and and I just loved it this it was so good the dynamic between these two characters um Blake is an absolute badass and a total powerhouse and she absolutely nails it on and off track their friendship that they end up building as teammates is incredible second to none I absolutely love their friendship at no point was Ryder like there is no fucking way I'm driving with a woman on the track or as my teammate teammate not a single moment he didn't blink for a second other than to take her in completely because he was so attracted to her immediately the second she took off her helmet after testing so it was incredible it was so good everything about this was so so good and the representation in here fantastic we have ptsd representation from obviously the accident that uh rider has had we have anxiety representation we've got chronic illness representation in the form of migraines and we also have grief as well in here and just general mental health representation as well and it was done so so well so there was literally nothing i could say bad about this book it was incredible i loved every single second this is my favorite f1 romance of all time and it's a debut kayla nailed this with a debut book and i'm so excited that i had the opportunity a to read it and b to read it early uh, so thanks to love love notes pr and also to kayla for sending me an arc of this i'm so happy and then for her to release the paperback early i can now take a proper picture of this for release day and do a proper review and everything and i'm really really excited it's so so pretty this is also the first in the series that i believe is going to be a quartet so keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in this and if you are an f1 fan and a romance fan i would 10 out of 10 recommend this book it was very very good i'm aware that a lot of people have said that if you continue on with lauren ash's f1 series the books do get better throttled is the worst one out of them um so i may try and continue on with these but this by far out of the four that i have tried five now that i've tried this is the best one i do have another one on my kindle that i want to get to because it comes out quite soon and then i think i'm getting an arc of another one as well so we'll see whether or not that comes through but yeah there, we're getting quite a few f1 romances coming through at the moment and i think it's because f1 has really taken off since drive to survive um so yeah absolutely love this five freaking stars it was so so good so i'm gonna go back to reading fae bound i have started it and i am currently on chapter five which is page 33 i haven't gotten too far um because i was doing my review for this and i couldn't listen to that and write my review for this um so i will continue on with that enjoying it so far yiran has just been exiled so we're at that point the drama's kicking off 
So I'm going to continue on with that. But yeah, I just wanted to come on and unbox this with you and tell you all about it. So I will check back in with you in a little bit. Hello, today is Sunday. Let's lift you up a bit so we're not cutting the top of my head off. Today is Sunday. We're spending the day in my reading corner today. It is currently two o'clock on the dot as well. Look at that. It's currently two o'clock. I've been sprinting for a couple of hours. Gav has just joined me. I have been reading for a little bit this morning and then during the sprints and I've edited this vlog up until this point. So um, I have been productive. Yesterday, I didn't give you another update, but I did actually finish Feybound yesterday by Sarah L. Arafi. I didn't get to Killing Stalk in Volume 3 and I'm not sure that I will. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. So I enjoyed this. I ended up giving it four stars. It was quite good. I wasn't entirely invested in the characters. Um, and it wasn't until like the last, the last quarter maybe that I was fully invested in the plot either. But I am now very intrigued to see where this story goes. Um, I had a good time with it. I ended up giving it four stars. I think that the... Faye side of things and the elven side of things was really fascinating. I think that like the world build building was really really good and I had a really good time with it and I am excited to see what happens with Yiran and Little Little Le Little I can't little little um they pronounce it differently on the audiobook um i'm excited to see what happens with them next and where this story will take them um in the next installment of this series i don't know how long this series is going to be trilogy three books so i am looking forward to that but now i've got to wait obviously because uh this has only just come out but four stars for this one i had a good time with it and then last night after i binge watched the rest of drive to survive because i watched about three or four episodes on friday and then last night binge watched the rest of it uh, until about half past two in the morning i did then go to bed because i have this thing where i need to start my next book the following night like the same day otherwise i won't read anything the next day i got 30 pages into mile high by liz tomford which is the book that i was talking about yesterday that i didn't want to mention just in case i didn't get a chance to get to it today in case i needed to finish fate bound this is very chunky I am currently 154 pages into this one and I am enjoying it so far. I'm having a good time. I'm following Xanders, who is an NHL player and um, plays for a big team, Chicago team. And we're following Stevie, who is a flight attendant on the Chicago team's private jet. And these two have uh, obviously met when Stevie's been at work as a flight attendant and Xanders has been on the plane flying f to his... Uh, games etc and off the bat straight off the bat Xanders was like rude with Stevie and uh, scrolling on his phone when she was trying to talk him through the safety demo on the plane and she has had attitude with him ever since and he is super into it he's kind of been painted as this playboy by his management and also the uh, you know the uh, publicity people I've forgotten what these people are called Sorry, just had to go out to the car to get my camera case to get the spare battery. Because my battery died. Anyway, um, I've forgotten what I was saying. Yeah, they've kind of had this banter since then. Um, uh, Stevie's been told by the lead... Oh, he's been painted... <laughs> His management have allowed him to kind of be painted as this proper playboy and he's he's a little bit like that but not as horrific as they say he is. Whenever he does interviews he wants to talk about hockey and about the charity that he does with his best friend. Um, but they never really want to talk to him about that. They want to talk to him about the latest squeeze that he's taken home and been pictured with recently. Which nine times out of ten he puts in a cab and sends home after they've been pictured. So... Anyway, um, he is very close with his best friend who is called Logan and her husband um, who is also on his team who is called Madison, that's his last name, I've forgotten what his first name is um, and they are quite the little kind of family unit if you like, um, Madison's got two kids and Z is kind of like Uncle Z essentially 
um, and it's quite sweet and I'm intrigued to see his character progression and kind of potentially his best friend is constantly saying to him like dude I don't want to do this anymore like they're painting in you in such a bad light they don't want to talk to you about the things that are important to you they just want to talk about women and it's not right it's not fair and he's like well I get paid the big bucks this is the whole point blah 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 management says so and his best mate's like yeah but it shouldn't be like that there's so much more to you than what they're painting you in this light to be stevie um is a i actually really like her i think she's really really cool however she's got a lot of insecurities she is a curvier woman and she does compare herself a lot to the women around her so the two other women that work with her on the flight as flight attendants tara and indy are blonde and slim like size two and she's not like that um and she's constantly comparing herself to other women especially like the women that Xander's keeps around him you know in his circle and stuff uh she's constantly comparing herself and this deep-seated kind of insecurity comes from her mother constantly talking to her about it and picking her up on it and all of this shit her dad never says anything about it because he loves her for who she is so long as she's happy that's all that's important to him but he's her mother will never let it go she's got a twin brother who plays uh who plays basketball if i remember correctly and uh he's a sweetheart their their relationship is absolutely adorable they're very very close reminds me of me and my brother and i love that but yeah so far i'm enjoying this we're about to have some steam i think and i'm really looking forward to it but so far i am enjoying this um and i'm having a good time with it so yeah i'm going to continue on with this one and i will probably wait until i've finished it it will probably be the wrap up actually it will be the next clip that you see so i'm gonna go and i will check back in with you when i'm wrapping this vlog up probably either this evening or tomorrow i have got a long ways to go with this and it's already 10 past two and i still have about five and a half hours of the audio left to go so um, I'm on sprints as well, so it's constant stop, start, stop, start. And Gav's on with me now, so the breaks will be longer than 10 minutes because we always get carried away and end up chatting for like 20, 30 minutes. So hopefully I will manage to finish this, but I'm determined to finish it. I do not want it running into tomorrow. I want like a really busy... I just want the day free tomorrow so that I can film and edit all day and then I can have two days to read. So that is my plan. So I'm going to continue on with this and I will check back in with you and have something to update you on. Okay, hello. It's Monday morning and I am here to wrap this reading vlog up. This was an incredibly successful first reading vlog for literature. I ended up managing to read seven, seven books in seven days. <laughs> Not sure if I've done that in a while, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself, honestly. It could have been eight had I had a chance to get to Killing Stalk in Volume 3. Um, or even finished You Again. But after saying that, if I'd have finished You Again, I probably wouldn't have had time for Mile High. Um, but yeah, this has been a pretty successful reading vlog. So let's very quickly go through what I read. I do need to give you a review on Bloodlands because I didn't do that. I've now edited the video, the footage up to date. So I need to give you my review on Bloodlands and then also my review on Mile High that I read yesterday. So we started the week off with Broken Bonds by Jay at Brie and I gave this one three stars. It was good. I am intrigued to continue on the series. Then I read Lunar New Year Love Story which I really enjoyed. This was really really sweet and I gave this one four stars. The illustration style was beautiful in here so this one did get four stars. Then we had Bloodlands by Stacey Marie Brown. Now this this one was probably my worst in the series so far it wasn't terrible but it's the only one in the series so far that's gotten three stars so i felt like in this one it was very repetitive we started off in a certain place we ended up finishing in that certain place with an escape halfway through that did not go to plan um and i just felt like it was quite repetitive i don't know i just I've been seeing Becca review these since we started reading them because I'm reading them for Becca's Patreon book club, the Alpha Ho book club. And she's been saying things like there's just a lot of convenient things that happen. They always manage to get out of a, out of a situation with an explosion. And I, I don't know if it was that I was just enjoying the books too much to really notice that. But in this one, I've really noticed it. Um, every single time there was an issue and they needed to get out of a st sticky situation, there was an explosion every time. <laughs> I don't know, it was glaringly obvious in this book. 
and it was very repetitive like I say a little bit like myself right now but overall I'm still enjoying the story and I'm looking forward to wrapping this up next month with Shadowlands so which is the chunkiest in the series uh it was a very fast read again as usual with these books uh but three stars for this one unfortunately then I did read Always Mine by Laura Pavlov. I've reviewed this one for you in this video. Um, this one also got three stars. I think it was three and a half on Core Pile, but three on Goodreads. I it was it was fine. It was it was okay. It was good. But I just we needed more time with them as best friends. Like, we just needed that time with them. And we didn't get that before that they before they then moved on to the next stage of their relationship. So that's what was missing from this one, unfortunately. But three stars. I would be interested in continuing on with the series with that. Then we have my favourite book of the readathon, and that is Lights Out by Kayla James. I gave this one a whopping five stars. This was absolutely fantastic. My favourite F1 read that I've ever read to date. Um, this was so good, and especially for a debut as well. She absolutely nailed this. All of the representation in here was done really, really well. Mental health, chronic health, um grief it was done so incredibly well and this the relationship between blake and Ryder, so so good i absolutely loved this no third act breakup if you're interested in a you know a book with no third act breakup very very good indeed really loved this one five stars then we did have fey bound by sarah l arafi i gave this one four stars this was a good read and i think a good start to a new series i am intrigued to see what happens next with this especially with everything that goes down in like the last the latter portion of this book um it was good i had a good time with it i think there were some portions parts of it where i was like i just don't know if i care enough about this i think the world building was done really really well and i loved getting to know about the fae and the elven characters um and like the way that they live differently um but there were some portions of it i feel like it didn't properly all come together till towards the end um when the big like reveal thing happened but i really liked this one i gave it four stars and then last but by no means least we have mile high by liz tomford which i did read yesterday this was really really good i started off a little bit unsure with this one i wasn't 100 percent certain that i was gonna like it about 50 pages in um our main character Xander's our MMC he was a dick a dick to begin with and I didn't like him and I was like I don't understand where this is going like what is happening but it became very very clear that he has this persona that his management team have made him carry for the last few years um, of his hockey career for the public eye because that's how they think the public want to perceive him and it's the, I think the character arcs in this was so incredible like Stevie is a plus size girl and she has this body image problem her mum has constantly told her throughout her life that she's too big and she needs to there's too much food on her plate and she shouldn't be wearing clothes like that etc etc um, and as a plus size girl myself I know how that feels I've had that for a good portion of my life um especially while i've been plus sized i wasn't always plus sized but i have been for most of my adult life um so i know exactly how that feels and there were actually parts in this where i had a tear in my eye um because she was having like really bad days with it and xanders would really help her through that and i just was very emotional about the things that she was thinking about herself and the things that he was saying to her to try and help her overcome it and i just thought it was done really really well um but the character arcs for both of them for stevie on that side of things but also the issues that she has with her mum and i loved the the sibling relationship with she had with her brother like they are literally best friends they are me and my brother um and i loved that i love to see me and matt represented in books as well like i love sibling love i just it makes my heart very very happy especially when they're as close as like stevie and her brother are and me and my brother are um and then for xanders with his father and his mother that character progression and then also everything going on with the team and his persona as well and him kind of coming out of this very shitty persona that he's been given 
and kind of overcoming that with everything else that he's got going on in the background as well. I just really, really thought that this was very, very good and very well done. But yeah, I enjoyed this one. So I ended up giving this one four stars on Goodreads, four and a half on Corpile. It was good. And I'm excited to continue on with the series because I have heard fantastic things about Caught Up, which is book three in the series. But I am looking forward to continuing on with it. So four and a half stars for this one. So yeah, overall, a very good week. Seven books. And they're not small books either, you know? Like seven books in seven days. I'm pretty impressed with myself. I honestly actually don't know how I managed it. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, smashed it. <laughs> Completed it, mate. Uh, I'm really happy. I hope that if you took part in this round of Cliturature Readathon that you enjoyed it. It will give you a little tidbit, but our next round will be in August. Apparently, August is the month of love. I, when I was Googling for literature to see how many rounds I would do for the year, I made the decision to do two. February just makes sense because of Valentine's Day. And then I was Googling um, months surrounding love, and August came up. Apparently, it's the month of love. So uh, I'm fully aware that the Aurelian Readathon usually takes place in August, which is a month long readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. Uh, but this one will just be a week and I've made, I've already made the bingo board and I'm really, really excited about it. I'm really, really hyped about it. But the, the prompts are so broad that you could 100% make your books fit for Cliturature Readathon for Aurelium Readathon as well. So hopefully that works out okay for those of you that take part in Aurelium Readathon. Um, I know that sometimes crossovers can bother people a little bit but I just it made sense for me to do August and it will only be a week so don't panic it's going to be okay but yeah that is the next one that you can look forward to I will try and drop the announcement video kind of early on in July I think so that you've got some time to plan your TBRs because the bingo board is bigger this time and better and I have lots of recommendations for you as well so I hope that you have enjoyed this round of Clitcher to Readathon. Let me know in the comments down below if you took part and what was your favourite book of the week. And are you excited for another round of this later on in the year? Because I know I am. I am very excited for another round later on in the year. And I hope you have enjoyed this video and I shall see you in whatever comes next. Bye for now.